I guess that's something we should have talked about a long time ago. Well, whatever you want to do, Story, and that is completely up to you. I just, I just wanted you to know that I am fine with you being in the baby's life. You don't have to give any answers today, sweetheart. You've got months to figure this out, okay? More like two months, Mom. And I think that Mrs. McBean has a right to know what to expect. If you are letting me adopt your child, Story. I think you can call me Marcy. Okay. Marcy, uh, when you ran away with Sam, I know that we felt that Sam should be with my dad because of blood and everything. But I so get now that you were his mother. And, and my dad didn't think about what was best for Sam. He just, you know, did what he wanted. Uh, you know, Star, I kind of feel like I need to come to your dad's defense here. At the time, your dad didn't know where Sam was. He was looking for him, and he wanted him. You know, we didn't want to confuse Sam either. But hey, I, I don't want to confuse. Right. I don't want to confuse this baby. Of course, I love this baby so much, and I do want to be a part of his or her life. But I also want what's best for the baby. Honey, why wouldn't it be what's best? Come on, Marcy. You know the answer to that already. If Star and I are involved with this baby and in his life, Todd's going to want to be too. I'm Todd Manning, by the way. I know who you are. I'm bound by confidentiality laws in regard to your daughter's case, so there's nothing to discuss. Please leave my office. Now. Well, didn't you discuss this case with Marcy McBain and Star's mother? I can't confirm or deny. I can tell you that Star is not going to give up her baby to a felon. <laughs> Isn't that what you are? I suggest you take this up with your lawyer. Taking it up with you. Yeah, I'm a felon. And you don't want to cross this felon lady. I want something, I, I generally get it. Todd isn't even allowed to see his own children, right? But trust me, Marcy, he will find a way. And I want what's best for this baby. And I think that is for him or her to have one mother. And that's you. And one day, I think he'll be old enough to understand. You know, like maybe my age. I actually made a video. You did? Yeah. You know, I, I love this baby so much. And I don't want him or her to think that I don't love it. You know, and I... Even though I didn't want to get pregnant, I really do think that this baby is a miracle. Oh, sweetie. No, well, I... Look, I mean, I mean, if you don't want the baby to see the video, then I, I, no. I'll understand. No, of course I do. Of course... I want this baby to know what an amazing birth mother you are and what a brave and unselfish thing you did. And Cole did, too. He loves this baby so much that he's given up everything. I guess Nora thought you needed to ease back into school mode, huh? I can't wait for summer to be over. Now that you're ready to see Star at school every day, I wish I could fast forward to next year. Well, you know, Dorian hasn't even started talking to me about where to apply to college yet. You've got two whole years. Not quite, actually. Early decision applications are due in the fall, and for that, you got to have your SATs, your teacher recommendations all gathered up, your college essay. Am I just raining all over this pool party here? Sorry. Cole's lucky. Guidance counselor talked to my mom about college visits, and she was all, well, with the price of gas, you can afford the virtual online tour. I mean, she's all about me going to college, but I don't want my family going broke or to be paying off loans for half of my life. You know what? There's always a way. Well, don't go too far, okay? I'm stuck in Landview. Permanently. Oh, come on, Langston. What about college? I'm pretty sure Dorian's going to want to homeschool me for college. The classics. Okay. Do you want some unsolicited advice? Never mind, you're going to get it anyway. It's, I think it's really important for everybody to leave the nest. But I, I already did that once before and not by choice. I mean, Dorian's been so good to me. If I leave now, I don't want her to see it like a slap in the face. Why would she see it that way? Well, after what happened with Adriana, I mean, I feel like I'm all she has left. See, Clint, what I don't understand is how is Dorian's foster daughter going to help us, pardon me, help you and your family get the company back? 
You know, something I worked at a newspaper once where the editor always said, there's no such thing as a business story. All business stories are personal stories. Do you know the lengths that Dorian has gone to to protect her daughters and her nieces? Blackmail? Murder? Now those girls have grown into women, and every one of them except Blair had done everything they could to get out from under Dorian's thumb as quickly as they could, leaving Langston. You know, dysfunctional as it is, Dorian's family is everything to her. Ah, so you're saying that even Dorian wouldn't disown her kid the way you've done to Natalie. Don't get cute with me. I haven't disowned anybody except you. Now, if you're not with me, I'm... Who said I wasn't with you, Clint? Keep talking. When I was with Dorian... There came a point where uh, she just put up this wall, and at the time I didn't understand it, but I understand it now. Because now I know that she has set her sights on taking in Blankston, and nothing else mattered, particularly me. And then when Starr got in trouble, Todd threatened to lean on Langston. That was a big mistake, because Dorian threatened to kill him, and I'm quite sure she meant it. So you think if she's in danger of losing Langston, she may do anything, including... Give the company back to you. Not quite as simple as all that, but that's the general idea, yeah. Ah, but I thought Ace's cardinal rule was never to make empty threats. I wouldn't dream of doing that. You're actually going to take Langston away from Dorian. No, 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 I'm not. But I know somebody who could.